Hello and uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited to have you on our webinar and to uh, to have a very special guest, uh, an expert in his field, uh, Jeremy Balenson, who is the founding director of the Stanford Virtual Human Interaction Lab, and he can tell you a little bit about what that means. He's also a co-founder of Striver. Uh, my name is Charlie Schreier. I am the content lead here at Striver, uh, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about culture. We're going to be talking about culture training and how difficult that can sometimes be. Um, and, and Jeremy's going to tell us a little bit about how VR is now slotting into uh, this whole idea of training culture and, and why that's such a big deal, really. Um, and, and we're, we're recording this based on a, an HBR article that Jeremy recently wrote. So he'll talk a little bit about that article and what got him excited about, about doing that article as well. So um, Jeremy, thanks for joining us. And if you could just give us a little bit of an overview about your background and, and who you are and some of the work that you do. Yeah, well, thanks, Charlie. I appreciate you having me on and uh, excited to talk about the work we're doing at Striver today. Um, so my PhD in the late 1990s was in cognitive psychology. And I worked with the great Doug Medine. Doug Medine is the founder of a theory called the exemplar model. Uh, and that's a, a model in which you don't learn things by learning rules. You have lots of small experiences and examples that slowly build up to instantiate um, this kind of general worldview or cultural understanding. And so actually my dissertation work was on using different techniques to quantify and to you know try to build out this notion of learning a culture. Um, so that was work that I did over 20 years ago. And then in 1999, I shifted from cognitive psych and I learned how to build the hardware to build virtual reality, um, how to code the content of virtual reality and to study how people use VR to learn and change attitudes and to interact socially. Uh, in 2003, I was lucky enough to get a job at Stanford. Uh, in the last uh, 18 years, I've been uh, running the Stanford's Virtual Human Interaction Lab, where we build VR, we run experiments on people uh, inside of VR, and we study how the mind uh, reacts to the technology. So that's, that's a bit about my background. Um, Derek uh, Belch, who is the CEO of Striver, was a graduate student in my lab, and together we studied VR and its effect on Stanford quarterbacks, and thus begins the long journey of Striver and, and, and my role in co-founding it. Great. Yeah. I, I didn't know that about your background. That's, that's definitely very interesting that, that VR was, was a little bit later in your, in your experiences, but, um, but yeah, so I mentioned the, the HBR article that you wrote and, and I thought that maybe you could give a little bit of an overview for the audience about what that article was about um, and what was, what, what its contents were. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I was excited to write about all three use cases, but you know, in the first draft of the piece, I really wanted to talk about training culture, which is work that Striver did with Sprouts, because in the academic literature, you know, in the VR academic literature, there is a lot on procedural training, and there's, you know, especially in the domain of training public speech, speaking and negotiation, there's you know, 50 to 100 published studies on on VR and soft skills, and what Sprouts decided to do was innovate around how do you train this notion of a corporate culture, which is this really, it's hard to do under the best of circumstances. And I got really excited about this use case, um, A, because it's I just find it fascinating, but B, unlike the other two, there wasn't a, a very strong, you know, canon of academic studies that we could work off to, to figure out how to do this. So um, it was super exciting just to see this work unfold. And, and, it, and it really is, um, uh, in my opinion, there's going to be a landmark uh, use case and an and, and initiative for, from Sprouts uh, and from Striver. And so um, I was super excited about it just because it was, you know, we were going where nobody had gone before. Uh, and, and it was really neat. So, so can you tell us a little bit about the use case and and what they did and and how VR fit into the whole system? Yeah, so so Sprouts um, has now hired two thousand new people uh, since COVID, and Sprouts as a differentiator for their 
brand, the, the culture of their employees and the feeling you get when you walk into a store and talk to the people that work there. That is one of the reasons why you go to Sprouts Farmer's Market. I mean, the food, of course, is, and the products are, 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 are fantastic, but you go there for the experience and for the people. And so for them, you know, under the best of circumstances, even when there was no COVID, training that is really complicated. And the way they were doing it prior was with a PowerPoint presentation. And you were learning, you know, these, these uh, six principles, um, for example, you know, enjoy the journey uh, and, and empower living, you know, through food. And there's these ways of being a Sprouts employee that they're trying to, you know, to have their employees epitomize these these six principles. And, you know, doing it over PowerPoint is fine. You can give somebody this substantive knowledge, but really what you want them to do is to, is to gain these experiences. When we were talking at the early storyboards, we, we really talked about this exemplar model, which is let's not give someone a set of rules, but let's give them lots of experiences that kind of chip away at, you know, what it's like to embody these six principles. You know, examples like, you know, you know, true customer stories where someone, uh, a sick elderly person, you know, couldn't come to the store and a family member came and, and, you know, or, you know, so they really like this watermelon melon, um, watermelon's his favorite food. And, and the employee stopped that we're doing, picked out the right watermelon, brought it out to the car so they could, you know, just going that extra mile, um, things that, you know, when you hear about me saying it there, it doesn't sound that impactful. But when you put on the goggles um, and you experience it, another example is a woman who just found out that that you know her son um, you know needs to be gluten free and has no idea how to cook a gluten free meal. And, and you know one of the uh, the people that work at Sprouts just stops what they're doing, kind of talks them through the food, and they you know come up with recipes. And you know you can the, there's tears in the eyes of the mother because you know a really hard day for her just got a little less hard and, and uh, things that you just kind of chip away and. I, so when I saw the storyboard, I thought it was good, but I still thought it was going to be really hard to pull off. And then um, when I saw an early build of this experience, I took off the goggles. I said, wow, you guys, um, I'm, I'm humbled by the job that you guys did. I mean, it, this, is, uh, this is a really special VR experience where you come out of there and you feel like Sprouts is a place that, that does have uh, a way of looking at the world that's a bit different than other stores. And, and no set of rules would have done that. It was just you know a series of experiences that chip away at this notion of what it's like to be uh, uh, the, the ideal employee at Sprouts. And, and, and to me, it just felt, it felt so valuable. Yeah, and it's really powerful. And, and I think you really hit at it when you talked about the experiences that you actually go through, and they're very emotional. Uh, and they really get at the, you know, the meaning behind some of the things that Sprouts does. And it's not just a grocery store necessarily, and it's not just somewhere to go buy food, but um, it's a place where the values really inform the entire place. They inform the entire customer experience. Um, and that was really, really important to them to be able to instill these values values so that employees embodied them and lived them uh, and that they really came out in the day-to-day -day experiences for customers. So tell us a little bit about the results. I know that the results were, were just as astounding in some ways as the experiences themselves. Yeah, so one of the things I love about working at Striver is that we don't want to use VR if it's not working. And, um, you know, we do lots of user tests along the way, uh, both kind of, you know, informal and qualitative at first, and then, you know, laboratory oriented where we get quantitative measures in, in a controlled setting next. And then of course at scale, um, once we go to thousands and thousands of, of people using it. And this was uh, the most impressive data here that uh, was that second part where Striver ran a controlled study. We had about 300 uh, employees go through it. Half of them did the typical method of training, which was um, learning these principles over PowerPoint. The other half did the VR experience. Uh, uh, instead, and what we measured was their ability to be perfect, to know all six of these principles, um, to be able to recognize the ones that were important sprouts, and to, to be able to, you know, uh, indicate that ones that were similar but not exactly the same um, were not the ones that were uh, the, the way that sprouts thinks about training employees. And in the VR condition, about half the sample, 48% of the trainees were perfect. 
I mean, they went from not knowing anything to knowing all six of these perfectly, so zero to perfect. In the control condition, which was their traditional method of training, only 3% of the people that went through the training became perfect. So think about that. It's a, a PowerPoint presentation. You're kind of seeing these uh, you know, principles on a screen and you know, hearing someone talk about them. Only 3% of the people that went through that were perfect in their understanding of these. In the VR condition, because they had this experience and they kind of got to be there and go on that journey, uh, about half of them learn it perfectly. And this is just with one VR experience. So, so, I mean, if you think about who you are, all humans are some combination of nature and nurture, and VR is not going to change your nature. But who you are depends on the experiences that you've had over the course of your life. And, you know, um, I would say that when one really understands a place where they work, it's because they've had years and months and they've had lots of experiences that they, they understand what that place is like. VR gives you a shortcut. It gives you an automatic way to have these very salient and perhaps rare experiences that wouldn't happen. You know, you'd have to wait a few months for them to happen organically in a store. But what we can do is, you know, accelerate that schedule and you now get the same experiences that a veteran would have had in VR uh, along a very quick trajectory. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm glad you said that last part, because I think that that's the part that's most interesting about this is that it's almost this ability to fast forward having experiences that you would normally take months and months. One of the stories I heard when I first joined Striver was uh, it was a lot different of an experience, but it was about how some uh, employees, before they could ever leave the trainee uh, designation, they had to experience these three or four or five different things that were extremely rare. And so that for some employees, it would happen in the first two weeks of their of their tenure. And for other employees, yeah. it would take months and months and months, and they're still trainees because of those rare things didn't happen. Now, I think those things were safety events. Um, so in a way, it was positive if you remained a trainee for a long time. But the point is we can fast forward some of those experiences and really make them – uh, you know, feel that culture, feel that safety, um, whatever it may be, um, in a much shorter period of time. So I think that that's that's definitely really interesting, and the results, um, you know, in some ways speak for themselves. So um, yeah, thanks for sharing a little bit about that, and I, I think also talking about why culture in itself, um, what it is about culture that makes it sort of so challenging to continue to train. Um, one other thing that I wanted to to tap into was something about COVID and how you mentioned. Uh, that, you know, COVID or not, this company was having some challenges around that. But maybe just given your experience with VR and, and some of the things that, that you've seen, how do you see VR training in general playing out um, during this COVID time and, and in terms of how we can continue to provide excellent training, but in a time when, you know, safety and health is really important as well? Well, you know, what we've seen with our current customers uh, is that they've got VR, they need to train people. And so there's a lot of customers that, of ours that have VR systems in many, many of their locations. And what they're doing is finding new ways to train, ways they hadn't even thought about training before because it's really hard to bring groups of people together now. And with VR, you can simulate lots of people, you can simulate crowds, you can simulate social interactions. And so I think what we've seen with the customers is that you know if you've got VR, now you can do things that you didn't even plan on using it for because you've lost so much of your ability to train others. And it's, it's, it's been an incredible tool. I, um, the interesting thing for me as a VR scholar, so getting outside of Striver for a moment, is all of us thought, you know, us meaning the people that are the academics studying VR for a couple decades, that, you know, when something like this would, were to happen, and, and you know, we none of us knew it would be a pandemic, but at some point we'd, we knew that travel would be a thing that we'd have to reduce, maybe because of climate change. Um, uh, we always thought that VR was going to take over then as a communication medium, um, meaning people put on goggles to, you know, to be in real time together with networked avatars. And, you know, we haven't seen that. I mean, what's what's what blows my mind is that the stickiest application of VR during COVID has actually been corporate training uh, compared to communication, because all of us thought that, you know, we'd now be all in the VR version of Second Life, and 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 instead we're using Zoom, because um, I could go into details about that, but where the surprising stickiness of VR has been during COVID actually has been in corporations that, uh, you know, are, are thriving, because there are many companies that are thriving right now during COVID, and uh, many of them are working with Striver, 
uh, and the need to hire and onboard and then continue their employees' just well-being and training in other ways. So that's the big surprise to me, is that it's not communication, it actually has been training. So as we get to the end here, uh, want to just ask one more question, and that's if you were to make recommendations. And, and you know, we've got folks from the business world that are watching. I know you meet with with people from the business world very often to discuss VR and, and some of its effects. Um, what are some of your recommendations when it comes to uh, VR training uh, right now? You know, the most important thing is to start with a problem that needs to be solved. Um, so, you know, I've been in VR for over 20 years now, and in the last five years, you've seen a lot of action on the, um, because the goggles are cheap enough now that, that everybody's trying and playing around with it. And do, my, my advice is do not chase down fancy graphics or really cool toys that kind of, not for corporate training. What you want to do is start with a, a problem that you have in your business that's hard to solve. I need to onboard thousands of people, but they you know, don't know what the culture is. Or there's a new machine, and I don't want to waste an entire day flying them out to a store to train them on how to use this new machine. Let's do it in 15 minutes. So begin there. Um, the good news is that most companies have enough to train that when you take that model, which is rank all the things they need to train about which is going to be the best in VR, there's so many great places to start, but let's start on the epic wins. Let's start uh, on the low-hanging fruit where, you know, you know it's going to be better in VR than how they're doing it currently, and there's so much of that. So that, that would be my biggest piece of advice, which is start where VR is actually going to be, you know, a real advantage compared to other forms of training, and there's lots of those. Uh, well, Jeremy, thank you so much for the time. Uh, really informative. I uh, love the excitement around culture. I think it's something that, especially as we're moving into, you know, kind of a new phase of employee experience and, and a new era of the way corporate culture um, operates, um, this is going to be really, really interesting. And, and love the data that you shared, love the excitement and, and the, the other information around the exemplar model. I think it was really powerful. So thanks so much for your time today. My pleasure. Looking forward to, uh, to the next one and, and keep up the great work. Okay, so thanks so much to Jeremy. Uh, really appreciate the time there. And, and as a follow-up to this webinar um, for our audience out there, we highly recommend that you download uh, a second piece by HBR, uh, which is a report by their HBR analytics services that was sponsored by Striver um, and just so happened to come out right around the same time as Jeremy's article on HBR.org. Uh, but that uh, paper is titled, The Future of Work is Immersive, and it has some really great, great quotes some really great insights from some of uh, the customers that Striver works with. Uh, and we highly recommend that, that as a next step for you. So uh, thanks again for joining uh, and have a great rest of your day.